Oh, hello there. I'm Michael. Welcome to Reading at Home. I was just playing my favourite instrument. Do you know what this is? It's called a ukulele. Maybe you've got a favourite instrument too. It could be the trumpet, or the flute, or is it the drums? That's given me an idea. Why don't we all hear a story about music? Reading at home! Hi, I'm Amy, and today we're going to read a story called The Flying Orchestra, written and illustrated by Claire McFadden. When I read a story, I always like to get myself nice and comfy so that I can listen to the words and enjoy the story. Are you ready to get started? Let's begin. The Flying Orchestra. Some days are so windy that even the angels lose their balance from the top of City Hall. It's always a day like this when the flying orchestra blows into town. Their concert program is a busy one. A violin solo when someone misses the train. A symphony at the airport for a traveller coming home. A concerto when someone stays awake all night thinking. and a sonata for a sad moment at a birthday party. The flying orchestra always plays when a baby is born. And every single day, they play at dusk and at dawn, even when the percussionist has a head cold. They go on outings to the seaside and play at lunchtime when the ocean sparkles and glitters in the sun. They fly out to the country and play under a sky milky with stars. The flying orchestra will play when someone learns to ride a bike. Cooks dinner for six. or has lost their way in the middle of a cold and dark night. And wherever they are, the flying orchestra play their best and most beautiful music for no reason in particular, but just because someone is listening. Some days are so windy that even the angels lose their balance from the top of City Hall. It's always a day like this when the flying orchestra blows out of town. They fly far, far away, over cities, towns and seas. It's quiet for a while. And then... The music starts again, as beautiful as before, in all the places they have been. And that's the end of the story. What a beautiful book. Could you hear the music playing as I read the story? I could imagine the sounds because I was making connections to some of the places in the book that I've been to and that I was reading. Making connections to a story helps you to better understand what you're reading. I wonder if you can make connections to some of the places that the flying orchestra flew into town and visited. Let's go back and have a look. There was a symphony at the airport. I can make a connection. When I go to the airport to pick up my grandparents, I can always feel excited and happy and I can hear the buzzing of the aeroplanes and the busyness of people travelling. When I make a connection in the story, I'm going to start making a paper chain for every connection. Make my paper chain. When I say my connection, the airport and the music I can hear at the airport 
breaks makes me feel joyful. Another place the Flying Orchestra visited was the seaside at the beach. Mm. I can hear the music playing at the beach, the waves whispering, the sand squealing between my toes. For that connection, I can add another paper chain to my connection chain. Maybe you could make a paper chain for every connection that you can make in the story. Great idea, Amy, to make a chain from the connections you make in a book. I made this one earlier while reading. As you can tell, it was a very long story. <laughs> There are lots of arts and crafts that you can make at home. Have you ever wanted to make a musical instrument so you can make sounds like the flying orchestra? Well, in just a moment, we'll show you how. See you soon. I just finished reading our story, The Flying Orchestra, again. Music can be so great to listen to and to dance to. Have you ever wanted to make your own music? Well, you'll need your own instrument. And right now, Brianna's going to show us how to make one in the art room. Art at home. Thanks, Michael. Hi, I'm Brianna, and today in the art room, we're going to make our very own guitar so we can join the Flying Orchestra. First, you'll need to make sure you've got an adult around so they can supervise. Then, you'll need a tissue box, some rubber bands, a cardboard roll, some craft sticks, scissors, tape, and plenty of colourful pens and stickers to decorate with. Then we're going to take our tissue box and cut a hole in it so the sound can echo on the inside. Now, for that part, you'll need an adult to supervise, maybe even to cut the hole for you. Now, I've cut a hole earlier. Can you tell me what shape this one is? That's right, it's heart shape, but you can choose whatever shape you like. Next, I'm going to put on these rubber bands by stretching them out. Now, be careful when you do this because rubber bands can fly off really fast. So once we've got them all on, we're going to straighten them out and then tape them down so they don't go anywhere. Now, can you count the rubber bands with me? I've got one, two, three rubber bands. And do you know what three plus one is? That's right, it is four rubber bands. So we've now got four rubber bands on this box. I'm gonna straighten them out and then take my tape just like this and stick it down on the top. Now we're gonna take our cardboard roll and this is gonna become the, the neck of the guitar. So we're just gonna stick it down with some tape like so. And you'll notice I've also put some marks, some horizontal lines on it. They are the frets on the guitar. Then we're gonna take our craft sticks and with a bit of tack, stick two on the top. These are going to be our tuning keys. And then take a third one and slide that down underneath and that's going to be our guitar bridge. Lastly, we've reached the final step and that means it's time for my favourite part, to decorate. So we can add some pom-poms, some stickers, whatever you think will make your guitar look best. And there you go, we're ready to join the Flying Orchestra. Well, it looks like Brianna's ready to join the Flying Orchestra with her craft guitar. Are you going to make a guitar as well? Maybe you might like to make a different instrument it's been great fun hearing stories about music and instruments, but I think it's time for a new storybook. And up next, we have a funny rhyming story all about animals. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> See you soon. Welcome back to Reading at Home. I was just having a chat to one of my favourite animals. Hello! Do you have a favourite animal? It might not be a bear. Maybe yours is a chicken. <laughs> or maybe it's uh, a horse. <laughs> Some pretty amazing creatures in the world. Wouldn't you love to hear a story all about animals? Oh, yes I would. Well then, let's hear one. Oh, I can't wait to hear this story. Reading at home. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm going to read my beautiful book, Funky Chicken, A Bushy Tale of Crocs and Chooks. Now there is a warning, may cause uncontrollable fits of laughter. I will not be held responsible. 
Okay, just want to make that clear. A long time ago, when the world wasn't old, bush animals gathered, or so it is told. A meeting was held that went on for a week to decide who amongst them was the most unique. They argued through daylight until it was late. They chose from all animals, enemy and mate. In seven long days of ferocious debate, they picked their contenders, of whom there were eight. Kookaburra, who laughed all day from up high. A black cockatoo with a piercing cry. <coughs> the burrowing wombat, who lived in a log. A beautiful, slippery, green tree frog. The dangerous dingo with a teeth gnashing bite. The bulgy eyed possum who came out at night. And a sneaky old croc who would give you a fright. After the animals had all had their say and the sun went to bed on that seventh day, the most unique creature of both great and small, far from minute, although not very tall, the rarest, the strangest, the weirdest of all, was rare funky chicken with a very odd call. <laughs> it's barely been seen though, the kookaburra cried. And Cockatoo said, I'm sure the last one has died. The wombat was shaking his head in surprise. He couldn't believe Funky Chook won the prize. The tree frog just frowned as she said, this is silly, and leapt in the water from off a big lily. Bulgy eyed possum, who rarely ever spoke, said, good on you chicken, you're not a bad bloke. The dingo just howled and ran off in the night in grave mortal fear of the crocodile's bite. But dingo did not need to worry or stress. At that time, the crocodile couldn't care less. Old croc wasn't hungry. He'd eaten before. He'd snacked on a bush pig at quarter past four. He had a good look though, a long sneaky stare at that strange little creature standing up there clucking and prancing and strutting around, the king of uniqueness, just newly crowned. And Croc began thinking, I wonder I do, if Funky Chook tastes like grey kangaroo, or would he be more like a black cockatoo? One thing was for sure though, the taste would be new. He had one last thought, slinking off in the night, to munch on that chook, would be such a delight. Next morning, the animals woke up at dawn to a clamor that gave them no time to yawn. That chicken was strutting around like a freak, yelling, I'm Funky Chicken, the most unique. The animals stared, not knowing what to do. They couldn't believe all this hullabaloo. Maybe this chicken was best off in a stew. Kookaburra laughed saying, what a strange fellow. The cockatoo said, he does seem a bit shallow. The wombat just couldn't believe his own eyes. The chook was so loud for a thing of its size. The tree frog said, Funky chook is not cool. This jibber and jabber, he looks like a fool. The nocturnal possum just went off to sleep, high up in his tree in a small furry heap. Then Dingo howled out, Bring the chook over here. My breakfast can start with a chunk of its ear. That chook didn't listen to what they were saying. All day he went on with his bragging and braying. Funky chicken is great. Funky chicken is grand. The coolest animal in all of the land. The clamor went on for the rest of that day. By night time, they all wished he'd just go away. There was one among them who wished him to stay. Old Croc had been watching him closely all day. Croc didn't care about Old Dingo Dog or Burrowing Wombat who lived in a log. Old Croc, he had other ideas on that night. He only had one creature set in his sight. The one thing that night that kept his lips licking. Uh-oh. Yes, sneaky old Croc tried to eat Funky Chicken. I hope he doesn't get him. 
Although you now know funky chooks aren't too smart, they move very quickly when given a start. And with Lady Luck by his side on that day, the croc missed his mark and the chook got away. You can't eat me croc, I'm far too unique. And he ran and he ran for the rest of that week. He ended up somewhere beyond Humpty Doo on an egg farm with Bob and his lovely wife Sue. There he wound up with some chooks in a pen and the bush never saw Funky Chicken again. The one thing the animals learnt on that night, other than crocs might eat chooks in one bite. Whilst it's nice to be famous just once in a while and strut round the bush with an I'm famous smile, sometimes it's best to take a lower profile to avoid being supper for a sly crocodile. And that was Funky Chicken, a bushy tale of crocs and chooks. Wow, what a hilarious story. Did Funky Chicken, a bush tale of crocs make you laugh? Chris is such a clever author, he uses rhyming words to entertain us. Did you hear rhyming? Rhyming words are words that sound the same at the end, like cat and bat. Did you hear the rhyme? That's right, they both have the at sound at the end. Let's try another one. Hmm. Sit and pit. Did you hear the rhyme? It is the rhyme in those two words. I wonder if you can help me finish some of these rhymes with some characters that you might find in your books. Here we have a slippery green tree frog who is sitting on a log. That's right, frog and log are rhyming words because they sound the same at the end. Are you ready? We have a buzzing bee and he's buzzing around a large green tree. You're very clever. Bee and tree are rhyming words. Let's see if you can do a tricky one. I'd like you to meet this cheeky little kitten who on one of her paws is wearing a mitten. That's right, the kitten and mitten are rhyming words that sound the same. Maybe you could find some rhyming words in the stories that you read. I love rhyming words. I managed to find a few that rhyme here in my books, like up and cup. Thank you. And hi and bye. Oh, and of course, spaghetti and confetti. Thank you very much. <laughs> After hearing about all of those animals, it really makes me want to move like an animal, like a, a flapping chicken or a slapping crocodile or a bouncing kangaroo. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Well, up next, we're going to move like some animals. See you soon. Welcome back to Reading at Home. There are some great animals in our story. Is your favourite the funky chicken? <laughs> Moving like an animal can be so much fun. Would you like to move like an animal? Well, Nicola is outside and she'll show us how. Moving at home. Hi everyone, my name's Nicola. I love reading about animals. Do you know what I also love? Moving like animals. Let's move like a frog. Crouch down. Before we start, can you check that you have enough room in your space to be safe? On the count of three, we're going to jump as high as we can. One, two, three. Let's do that again. This time I want you to try and catch a fly. One, two, three. One more time. This is a very hungry frog. One, two, three. Well done, everyone. I wonder what else we can do. Let's move like a gorilla. Stand up tall, big strong legs. 
On the count of three, we're going to beat our chest like a gorilla. One, two, three. One, two, three. Knuckles to the ground. One, two, three. One more time. Stand up straight. This time, we're even stronger. Take a big breath in, puff up your gorilla chest. One, two, three. Knuckles to the ground. One, two, three. Let's move like a cat and a cow. Come over onto all fours. Take a big breath in. Drop your belly down like a cow. Lift your eyes up to the roof. On the breath out, push down through your hands and lift your spine. Let's do that again, but add the animal sounds. Moo. Well done, everyone. Thanks for moving like an animal. See you next time. Thanks, Nicola. We had a great time moving like animals. We sure did, and we hope you've had fun with us here today. To continue reading great storybooks before we see you next time, join the Premier's Reading Challenge. Just visit the website on the screen. We'll see you next time for more Reading at Home. Bye! Bye. Authorised by the Queensland Government, Brisbane.